Directional Range, also known as a VOR. The typical VOR is usually white and resembles a big bowling pin. However, other types of VORs exist that look much different. Since VORs operate within the frequency band of 108 to 117.95 MHz, they fall into the space wave spectrum. This does allow for relatively interference-free navigation. However, reception is limited to line of sight, which prevents a pilot from receiving a signal when at low altitudes or in mountainous terrain. VORs are oriented to magnetic north and transmit radial information outward in every direction, similar to spokes on a bicycle. Technically speaking, there are an infinite number of radials being broadcast out, but for simplicity, it is said that only 360 radials are used. In the airplane, the VOR indicator consists of three vital parts. The course deflection indicator, or CDI, the to from indicator, and the omni bearing selector, or OBS. The OBS knob is used to choose the course, or radial, that you'd like to reference. The to from flag will tell you whether the radial selected will take you toward the VOR or away from it. Finally, the CDI tells you how far off you are from the center of the course in degrees. Now you may be asking yourself, self, what's the difference between a radial and a course? Well, they are really the same thing. However, when flying, radials are directed away from the station, whereas courses are directed toward the station. So, when you fly away from a station, you want to follow a radial. When you fly toward a station, you want to follow a course. The reason for the distinction is because the VOR indicator, in its old school fashion, does not know what the aircraft's heading is. Let's say you are directly south of the VOR flying northbound. You could dial in either the 180 degree radial from or the 360 degree course to into the OBS and both will tell you that you are on course. However, if you start drifting to the west, you'd get two different indications on your instrument. The instance where you have 360 degrees to selected will indicate that you are left of center. However, if you had 180 degrees from selected, the instrument will actually indicate that you are right of center. This type of situation is called reverse sensing. If you were not aware that you had mistakenly entered the reciprocal radial into the instrument, or you tried to correct toward the center, the further off course, you would actually sense a VOR's radials emit out like spokes on a bicycle. The closer the pilot flies to the VOR, the more sensitive the instrument gets. Let's again say that we are south of the VOR on the 180 radial, flying northbound. We set the OBS to 360 degrees and we get a two indication. The closer we get to the station, the more sensitive the needle gets but the indication will continue to show two. As you pass over the top of the VOR, you enter a zone called the Cone of Confusion. The Cone of Confusion is the area above the VOR where the airplane does not get a clear signal. The to from indicator will go to the off position because the receiver can't quite tell where you are. As you fly away from the VOR, the receiver gets the signal again and the flag flips to a from indication. Now, you can track the 360 degree radial from the VOR and continue flying northbound, tracking the radial away from the station. If at any time you want to figure out where you are in relation to a VOR, all you need to do is find what radial you are on. That means that on your indicator, you need a centered CDI needle and a from flag. Simply keep rotating the OBS knob until the CDI centers. If by chance it's centered with a two flag, you are on the reciprocal radial. You need to rotate the OBS 180 degrees left or right. It will center once again, this time with a from flag. So, by using one VOR, you would know where you are in relation to that VOR. However, you don't know at what point you are along that specific radial. For that, you'd need either distance measuring equipment, or DME, or a second VOR. The DME will tell you how far from the VOR you are, pinpointing your location. 
two VORs can accomplish the same thing through a process called triangulation. To triangulate your position, pick two VORs that are near you and tune in their respective frequencies. Now, simply center both needles with from flags to find the radials. Use a sectional chart to draw the radials out. The two radials should intersect, indicating your current location. FAA regulations require you to check your VOR equipment every 30 days for IFR operations. It's not required for VFR operations, but it's a good idea to test it anyway. When pilots perform a VOR check, a record of it is kept in the airplane. This log contains the date of the check, the location of the check, any bearing errors encountered during the check, and finally, the pilot's signature.